Coming up on Ag Week TV, the trade war escalates between China and the U.S. with the tit for tat on tariffs. Work continues in the 2018 Farm Bill. We'll see why farm groups are optimistic about it. We'll take a look at South Dakota's growing dairy industry. And a former Minnesota Viking returns to his farm roots. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. The trade war between the U.S. and China has escalated. President Trump has asked the U.S. trade representative to identify another $200 billion in China tariffs at the rate of 10 percent if China implements its threatened $50 billion of tariffs. China's 25 percent duty will be placed on U.S. beef, corn, wheat, sorghum, DDGs and soybeans on July 6. With China the top export market for U.S. soybeans, prices have already taken a hit, and the long-term loss of market share is a bigger concern. They consume so many soybeans, and we have a relationship with them that's so good that we hate to risk losing that. It takes decades to build that relationship back. U.S. pork imports to China will face an additional 25 percent tariff on top of the 25 percent duty that's been in place since April 2nd. Iowa State University analysis shows a major economic hit to U.S. pork producers. It's like $2.2 billion just with the original one from China over the course of the year. Now with this additional one, I would estimate that it would probably be that much more again on top of it. The president says if China attempts to retaliate, he'll look at another $200 billion in tariffs. Meanwhile, Europe, Turkey and India have also announced retaliatory actions. Just talk of tariffs sent steel prices up months ago, and now they're up nearly 30 percent in some cases. That's triggering price hikes on farm equipment and buildings on top of an already weak farm economy. Superior Grain Equipment builds and installs steel grain storage bins and dryer equipment. It's based in Kindred, North Dakota, and operates in the Dakotas and Montana. They also have a plant in Beersford, South Dakota. That makes them one of the largest steel users in the region. Operations manager Josh Rouser says right now steel prices are as high as they've ever been, up 20 to 27 percent, and he says there's no end in sight. As soon as the word tariff was, was muttered, basically steel mills took full advantage of that and created a, a fairly false sense of demand almost, or at least their prices showed that. There's no guarantee of it going back down. It's really going to take either uh, tariffs to go away potentially or for them to find a better way to produce steel and, and give it to us at a decent price. Rouser says they had stockpiled steel when rumors about higher prices started about a year ago, but he says it's hard to say how long that inventory will last or what will happen by the time it runs out. Senate leadership is pushing for a vote on the farm bill on the floor prior to the July 4th recess. So far, the legislation has received favorable reviews. Farmers were happy with the Title I program, including changes to the popular Art County program to use RMA data to figure payments and a strengthening of the crop insurance program. Obviously, the safety net factor for us, uh, as we're making the decisions we're making with crop insurance and things like that, we need to continue to have that in place, uh, I think, as probably the number one thing. Farm groups are optimistic about the Senate passage due to the bipartisan nature of the bill, and that will allow it to be conferenced and completed on time to avoid an extension. Our farm bill expires here this fall, and putting certainty in the marketplace with all the uncertainty would be helpful. Farm groups have also been supportive of the conservation title and funding for export programs and research. The Senate bill doesn't contain the controversial reforms for nutrition program eligibility. Two North Dakota farm leaders and the head of the region's food bank are voicing their support for the Senate Farm Bill and opposing House versions that would cut food benefits or add impractical work requirements. North Dakota Farmers Union President Mark Watney and Great Plains Food Bank CEO Steve Sellant spoke at the Farm and Food Leaders News Conference. They praised the Senate Farm Bill, which passed the Ag Committee but still must pass the full Senate. It improves the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, which was formerly the Food Stamp Program. Our farm organization strongly believes that we need a food assistance program. Uh, the current one, the SNAP program, is an excellent tool. Uh, we don't think it should be cut. It's uh, essential to us working with our urban cousins to be able to pass a Food Security Act, which the Farm Bill is part of. And SNAP really provides enormous benefits for the people of our state. It can have a lifetime impact on children in terms of their development, health, 
and ability to learn, which in turn impacts their potential and productivity as adults. The other ag leader at the meeting was Ryan Taylor, a North Dakota rancher who was head of USDA's Rural Development Agency in the Obama administration. They urged people to contact Representative Kevin Kramer to ask him to support a nutrition-friendly version of the bill in the House. We'll have much more on the Farm Bill in the next Ag Week magazine. Legislation has been introduced in the House and Senate to ensure consumer product and warning labels are based on sound science. The Accurate Labels Act would require state and local labeling laws are clear, accurate, and documented with research. All state-mandated product information would be provided through a smart label and on websites. The bill is in reaction to warning labels for glyphosate mandated under Proposition 65 in California and being considered in other states. Right around the region gave crops a boost. We'll have a progress report and market analysis next on Ag Week TV. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, five right here, now I have them times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. U.S. row crop condition rating stayed record high last week, while spring wheat saw a huge improvement. U.S. corn is rated 78% good to excellent, up 1% from last week, but 11% above 2017. Ratings improved in Iowa and the Dakotas. U.S. soybeans were 73% good to excellent, down 1% from last week, but 7% above 2017. Ratings improved in the Dakotas and Iowa with rain, but were down in the rest of the region. Nationally, spring wheat conditions were up big this week, improving 8%, with the region also up from 6 to 9%. And the U.S. winter wheat harvest is ahead of normal, but hasn't started in the region, and conditions continue to slide. Joining us with markets this week is Frayne Olson from NDSU. And, of course, we've had this big retracement in the grain markets um, due to fund liquidation, weather, and trade. And let's talk about that with these China tariffs. Have we priced a lot of this into the market or not, especially with the spike lows we hit this week? Um, the, the short answer is yes, we have. Um, the, the futures market, their intent is to try and anticipate what would be the value as we move forward. They're taking all of the information they have in the marketplace trying to come up with uh, a reasonable estimate of what the value of, of corn, soybeans, and wheat would be, again, given what we know today in the marketplace. So the minute that information comes out, it's processed and, and fed into the marketplace. So, yep, the, the trade uh, tariffs that we're talking about have already been priced in. And the value-added tax is already being traded, right? Correct. Um, and, and there's some question right now because China currently has a 13% value-added tax on soybeans coming into the country. Uh, the question is, is this going to move from 13 to 25, or is it going to be an additional 25? I think the market is anticipating that we're going to see 
it moved from a 13% to a 25%. So do you think that we will get a deal before July 6th, or is this going to be a longer-term impact? That's anybody's guess right now. If I were a speculating right now, I would say this is probably going to last longer than July 6th. I think the, the tariffs are going to take, take place. I think the trade is going to have to worry about how do we reshuffle the flow of grain within the world market. Um, given the, these import tariffs, what does it mean for U.S. purchases? Um, so we're, we'll have to wait to see, but if I were betting right now, I'd guess that we we're going to have the, the tariffs come on. I'm sure you've heard it, and I have too, Frayne, that producers say China has to buy beans. Mm -hmm. They need the beans, and but the question is going to be at what price, right? Correct. Um, when you do the math on kind of flow of trade and the amount of soybeans in the world market that are tradable stocks, yes, the, the Chinese do have to come and buy some beans from the United States, but as you mentioned, it's a matter of at what price. Um, because somebody's going to have to pay that value-added tax. It's usually shared between both the buyer and the seller in the, in the marketplace. Uh, but somebody's going to have to pay the tax. And even if we do, do start shipping to other locations, if we don't sell as many beans into the, into the Chinese market, we shift into some others, in particular Southeast Asian markets, um, there's going to be some additional transportation costs. There's going to be some additional haggling going on to say, well, we know the, so the U.S. has soybeans. You know, let's try and, and negotiate the best margin we can as a buyer. And then will Brazil's infrastructure be able to handle the extra volume? And that's the other big issue that I, a lot of folks haven't talked about much. Um, with the ex increased export trade volumes, um, there's pretty good throughput capacity at the port level, but the in infrastructure within the country to be able to get beans from where they're produced into the, the, the export terminals is really a question right now. And it's going to put the higher volumes are going to put a lot of strain on their infrastructure. So it'll be, it'll be testing those waters as well. You say we won't get a deal July 6th, but when and if we do get a deal, will the market recover? Uh, yes, I do expect it to recover because, again, right now the market is anticipating we're going to have these, these tariffs and are going to last for a, for a certain time period. So if we do get a rebound, um, it won't probably be to the levels that we saw in the, at the end of May, uh, simply because it looks like we're going to have a pretty large crop coming and the weather um, is a portion of this as well. But we will get a rebound. Um, I, will that be a pricing opportunity for farmers? You know, that's up to your cost of production and what your marketing plan currently looks like. Does this do long-term demand destruction, though? In my opinion, it doesn't. Um, I, I, I do think that there's enough demand base. Um, the U.S., if I were a Chinese buyer right now, I would want to have both the U.S. and Brazil and Argentina in my portfolio of, of, of customers and saying, well, I'd like to be able to play one against the other and try and make sure I got the best deal possible. Well, we appreciate your time. Frank Olson from NDSU, and you can hear our extended conversation at agweek.com. Well, many welcome the recent rain. Some got far too much. We'll talk with one farmer who's dealing with too much water. And later we'll see how South Dakota's dairy industry continues to grow. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Get your row crops off to the right start with an early riser Case IH planter from Titan Machinery. Case IH early riser planters feature high-tech yet rugged planter row units that quickly adapt to the toughest seeding conditions, while leaving an optimal seed bed to promote early, uniform plant emergence. Only Case IH early riser planters are designed to leave a flat bottom seed furrow, ensuring consistent seed depth and even emergence. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today for more information on the next generation of planting technology from Case IH. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. 
Micro Essentials is a premium phosphate product. It's a dry granular product. The main difference with a Micro Essentials type product is you have a homogeneous granule for the nitrogen, the sulfur, the phosphorus, and in this case, the zinc is all in one granule. If you ever have a desire or a need to learn more about what does sulfur do within a soybean plant, what does the potassium do for the corn crop, we have microessentials.com. We also have a great resource, cropnutrition.com. The late planting date for soybeans in many parts of Minnesota may mean some farmers missed the window for spraying dicamba beans. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture kept the June 20th application cutoff date for dicamba on extend soybeans. In a letter released to stakeholders, the Ag Commissioner explained the rationale for holding to the restrictions despite the challenges presented with the late seeding. North Dakota's cutoff is June 30th, or first bloom, whichever comes first. South Dakota is also the R1 growth stage. Heavy rains over parts of the region have some rivers approaching flood stage and have left standing water in many fields and ditches. In this week's Crop Stop, we caught up with Andy Meyer, who's from Barnesville, Minnesota. A wet spring gave him a slightly late planting start, and the recent rains made spring a bit of a challenge this week. But so far, the rain or standing water aren't creating any serious problems. Right now, it's not so bad, but if we get in, if we get water backing up into the fields and it sits there for a couple of days, that's when we start to see you know crop injury. If we don't get any more rain now, it will be okay. Uh, it's when we get the next half an inch and the next half an inch two days after that, and an inch three days after that is when we start to see you know major crop damage. After a rainy week, will the region dry out soon? Here's John with your agri weather outlook. As the calendar turns from June into July, the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest region, a significant change happens in that we stop getting quite so many of those little nuisance rains. We start getting bigger ones and there are fewer and far between it. It happens just the way the pattern is setting up right now. Hot and sticky air moves up into the mid part of the country. That's typical. Setting up a boundary where we often get a lot of the stormy weather, Nebraska up to the Canadian border, Iowa up to the Great Lakes. A lot of the storms start happening in the middle of the night. And after all, these things do happen every summer. It's whether we get stuck in these patterns or not. Right now, it looks like they're coming and going. We've had some hot, humid weather. By the way, the bright red, I indicate this is 90s, a few spots in the hundreds. The orange, what I call warm, is mostly 80s to maybe seasonal low 90s. Nothing too extreme in the warm. And this pattern setting up this week is going to keep most of the hot weather further south. Jet stream kind of split into a couple of parts. Should keep the really heavy rains elsewhere. But toward the end of the week, that heat will start coming northward. Heat and humidity and with the jet stream in fairly close proximity, could be setting up in about a week from now, by next weekend, possibility of some fairly local heavy rains across the plains. Today there will be, or this week, there will be areas of showers and thunder showers. certainly. They'll be scattered around the region, uh, across the Midwest from time to time, from day to day. But it's really in that second week, or the weekend into the second week, as the jet kind of consolidates a bit, that we'll start getting some of those bigger storms. In between that, there will be more opportunities for just nice weather and warm weather as well. Brief cool down for some time around the 4th, but then it does look like the heat will be back. So summer is here, hot and sticky. Start looking for more stormy weather overnight. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily, 
Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Get ready for the biological revolution. Enhance by Ag Concepts is a scientifically designed foliar fertilizer formulated to quickly deliver essential nutrients to your crops for the greatest possible yields. I had a hail incident and I only had maybe beans that were four inches tall. I put some Enhance out. That seemed to really bring my beans back. Got 40 bushel beans compared to a zero. That's the best dollar ever spent. Join the biological revolution with Enhance by Ag Concepts. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. South Dakota's dairy industry continues to see growth. In fact, the state leads the nation in milk production increases month over month and year over year. It's an effort that has been going on successfully for over 30 years. South Dakota's dairy industry continues to be in growth mode. Cow numbers have risen in the last decade from 80,000 at the low to the current 120,000 head, resulting in more pounds of milk being produced. The I-29 corridor has had positive growth uh, for several years here, and that in fact has led the nation in its growth on a percentage basis um, for numerous years. The building herd can be attributed to the industry and the state recruiting new dairies like the Verpollens who relocated from the Netherlands to the friendly business climate in South Dakota. We could sell our milk quota in the Netherlands, get a good uh, money out of that and then just gain a lot of cows in a short time. They started with 500 cows in 2001 and have grown to 1,400 today. Modak Dairy near Goodwin is a 2,000 cow operation indicative of the growth not just in production but processing. There's two processors within 40 miles of us that are expanding, major expansion. Right now the processor is, is uh, stepping the plate so we have to bring some more milk in for them because they want it. However, as consumers are seeing on June Dairy Month tours, herd expansion is being done in an environmental manner. The number one thing is we try to be responsible. Um, we live here too as farmers. We drink the water, we breathe the air. Those dairy farms also bring significant economic value to the state. Every dollar that you can spend gets turned around in the community and helps our local businesses and um, it's just a benefit all the way around. Processing growth includes Valley Queen Cheese in Millbank, which is expanding from 4 to 5 million pounds per day. AgriPure in Lake Norton is also expanding from 3 million to 9 million pounds daily. It's known as the largest ranch-oriented trade show in the United States. The Sandhills Ranch Expo is located in the heart of ranching country in Bassett, Nebraska. It was a soggy start to the 29th annual show, which features 240 exhibitors and draws attendees from as far as 300 miles away. The reason is because ranchers can see the latest in ranching equipment, from cattle feeding and handling equipment to the full line of haying products. What a better place to come and compare products. You know, if you're wanting to, uh, say, a bale processor, you know, there's probably six different types of bale processors here. You'd, you'd drive your wheels off trying to compare all these products. The other thing that sets the show apart is it's run totally by volunteers, and the money raised goes back into the local community and supports scholarships. A former Minnesota Vikings player comes back to his North Dakota farm roots. We'll tell you why next on Ag Week TV. Advanced biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. 
plus see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Former Minnesota Viking Jim Kleinsaucer made a trip back to his home turf. Kleinsaucer grew up on a farm near Carrington, North Dakota. He was in Jamestown for an event sponsored by Sylvia's Financial. He talked about the importance of using data in farming, and he says he's grateful he was raised on a farm. Kleinsaucer says he got his work ethic from his parents. I'm proud to say I'm from North Dakota. I'm proud to say I grew up on a farm, and uh, you know I think it's a really big thing. Red McCombs, when I was first drafted with the Vikings, before we even like introduced introduced, he came up to me and slapped me on the back and said, "My hardest working hired hand was from North Dakota." Klein Saucer retired from the NFL in 2011, and now he says he's a full-time dad. Spring and summer on a working farm? Who can beat that? Mark Pates of Stony Hill Farms near Volga, South Dakota, along with his wife Phyllis, their son Kevin, and daughter-in-law Courtney, hosted a pet a lamb opportunity. They welcome visitors most any time, but now have been more deliberate about making an event for it, promoting ag education. The children are inquisitive about lambs, so they like holding lambs, feeding lambs. The parents like to know about the ewes and the lambs, so they ask the questions pertaining to the flock. So when the kids get ready to leave, after we've seen all the sheep and showed them the operation, then we, we want to send them away with something so they'll remember they were here. This is the goodie bag, and we've got little sheep to give them as they leave. And the older kids, we give them a little bag of wool that they can show to their friends, take to school for show and tell if they'd like. Farmers share their knowledge and kids learn from being up close and personal with animals. For info, go to agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you next week.